maintain this, okay? Because what that allows you to do is basically straighten your elbows and your guns will all target for Does that make sense to you? No. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. chest ready position all you're going to do is kind of flare out your elbows bring it up so let's go high the gun kind of up like this if i did something stupid walked in front of you it's just a matter of doing that i got it back down again. okay all right okay guys you saw what we've been doing we're just basically working our way through that arc all right don't fall in love with any particular ready position because you don't know what you're by the same token, we don't want to make ready positions vary so greatly that we have muscular confusion. Do it all. You want to just keep it right here like this, nice and simple. Puzzle goes in the direction that you need it to be, or that you don't want it to be. Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. All right, guys, right here. Eyes and ears first, load, make ready. Might come on back just a little bit, brother. There you go. Guys, once you're loaded up, go ahead and assume the chest ready position, or what I consider the center position. I'm going to come and take a look at it. But the muzzle is high, so if somebody walked in front of you, it wouldn't take much to get the muzzle away from you. Okay? When you deploy the gun, it's going to be like I'm tipping over a bomb. Okay? Hey, hey, real quick. You want to have it in tight, but you don't want to have it so tight that you couldn't fire a shot. Okay. You basically can run the front side all the way out. Okay. All right. Here we go, guys. Two rounds. High ready. Decock if necessary. Recover to the holster. All around. Don't fall in love with any particular ready position because it may not be the one you need. Back in the law enforcement days when everything was low ready, there were a number of situations where guys' guns followed them around the corner. Not a good idea. It's called telegraphing your position. You don't want to do that. The reason I give you three of them is because you use the one you need, but it doesn't take a lot of movement to change them out. Because literally, you may be here, then you're here, then you're here, and then you're back here like this. But you don't want to put a lot of movement in. You want to keep the movement done. Several of you shoving the gun straight out like that, trying to fire before it came to a stop. Well, I was at so-and-so's class and that's what he taught. Fantastic. Got no problem with that if that's what he teaches. Let me ask you, how many rounds does he have downrange versus how many rounds you have downrange? You see that a lot, especially with very gifted shooters. You know, they're trying to teach you how they do it, but as I said this morning, you don't have their ability. I'm always a big fan of deliberate deliberation. I would much rather you deliver the gun, make sure it's on the target, then touch and press the trigger, than trying to hope you can get the shot. Shot that hits up here, say two tenths of a second faster than a shot that hit here, what's going to be bad? Look, you guys are all fast enough. You're fast enough for what we need to do. What you need to do is be able to hit when you're shooting at because that's what end the fight. I asked somebody on the line, who decides the fight's over? Well, he does. You just bring him to that conclusion. How do you do that? Accurate shooting. 